Afternoon and welcome to Dark Shed Live. I've got no idea what episode I'm on now. 13 maybe? I don't know. Uh, it's Sunday the 10th of May. Uh, weather's turned quite a bit here. I don't know about you. Uh, lucky because it was pissing it down a minute ago and it was quite noisy in, in the old shed uh, with the rain beating on the roof. I uh, hope you're all well today. I don't know. I haven't planned anything for today. I, I basically, um, I just kind of got involved in doing something else the last couple of days. I was always tend to and kind of drift away from what I was working on. Um, so, oh, where's the thing? Um, so today I'm just going to kind of do a bit of large format stuff. Um, so I just fell over outside in the wind. Um, uh, yeah, so basically I've been, I don't know if you can see it from it, I'm just doing like a bit of a still life with some uh, dry flowers and taking a large format photo. So I thought I'd just take this opportunity just to go through um, large format uh, using the chroma camera and kind of what's involved in that, just a brief overview of it all. Um, right, so let's swap. The other thing is, I didn't because I'm using my tripod for the large format and um, for this setup. The like the tripod that I use for like the print table and um, <sighs> okay, wait a minute, or the trays and everything. Um, I didn't want to dismantle that setup because I'm in the middle of this at the moment. I've only just done my first uh, exposure of it, so. If I kind of take it all apart and then have to put it back together again and try and replicate it, chances are I'm going to spend much longer than just leaving it as is. Um, hopefully that negative will be dry quite shortly. Um, so I'll stick that on a, a little light table and we can have a look together, see what it's like. So let's let's pop over to uh, this camera here. Right. So large format. Um, there are two main sizes of large format I guess that are popular um, and easily readily available at the moment. Uh, there's 4x5 and 8x10. This is 4x5. This is the size of the negative. Oh, we've got, there's my finger for scale. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty big. Have I got a 35 mil somewhere? Here we go, it's a contact sheet next to it so you can see in comparison to this uh, What's going on there? Um, to a 35 mil one, how much bigger it is. And the film you have to manually load into a uh, double dark slide, which is this here. And in each one of those, you get to put two frames in. So in the dark, you have to open, try and do this 100, it's gonna be fun. You open that up like that, a little flap there. Then you film here. A little notch in the corner, and that notch differs between different film types. Um, what's that? I think that's FOMA, um, and that helps you find which side the emulsion's on. So if it's in the top right corner, if you're looking at a portrait or a landscape, it's the bottom right corner. Then your emulsion's facing forward, and then it slides under these little grooves here. Let's focus on that. If we can. can I focus that close? No. To see that little groove there, one at the top, one at the bottom, and it slides under that. Obviously, you don't use your fingers on the emulsion in the real world. And that goes back over there, and that the slide then goes into that. So you can do two of those in one of these double dark slides. Um, at a time. And then what I do is I've got a little notebook that I write everything down in. So I write down whatever numbers on here. I write down corresponding film in there and then I'll make notes when I'm actually shooting it. And then this is the development uh, index as well for my, uh, my processing. So the actual camera, uh, it's very simple really. I'm sure they're not simple to make. Steve at Chroma Camera made this um, with his bare hands. 
Um, there's a rear standard, which is where you put your uh, your film. And you do all sorts of funky things with these, so like these knobs here loosen off, and you can tilt and and pan and everything. Oh, I won't go into that now. This is just a simple example. Now you've got your front standard here, which is where the lens sits on. Um, I won't take that out because doing it one-handed seems a bit dangerous. And part of that is where your shutter is as well. So you've got your aperture control and your shutter all, all at the front here. And there's a little switch to open and close the lens uh, on most of these. So when you first, you have it open. You've got it open? I don't know if you'll be able to see the image through here. There we go. Now you can just see that with my reflection. Work. So it's, you trick a dark cloth over the top of this so then you can see the screen a lot easier. And you can use a loop as well, pushed up against there, and you can focus perfectly on the image. Uh, on this one, the image is focused using these little knobs here, which I've got locked off at the moment. For that. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that's moving the lens board forward and backwards and then that adjusts your focus. So you do all that under a dark cloth, you get your focus set, then you close the lens down, close the lens with your little switch. Each lens, each shutter will be slightly different for this. Um, and then you won't see, but hopefully you can see, there's no image on the back because the lens is closed. So you, you set your exposure up, whatever you've metered at, um, and then you cock the shutter, which is, see if we can show you that here. Little switch there, spring loaded, and then shutter release cable, fire your shutter. Now, Obviously that didn't take an image because I didn't put the negative in. So to expose onto a negative, you've got it loaded like that. And it goes into the back of the camera. This is really difficult to do 100. Slides in, locks into place. So when you've got your lens closed at the front, you can safely take the slide out. Because all this is completely light tight. Or it should be. Um, and when you take the slide out, when you then fire the shutter, it exposes the image onto the, the negative. Then you put the slide back in, take it out, and that's it. You're off, you can then develop that film. So that's a brief overview. Um, this is what I'm setting up, set up at the moment. Got these flowers here, these dry flowers. And I've got multiple flashes and stuff going on to light it. So what I'll do is um, I'll just go and get the negative out the dryer and hopefully I can actually show you that. Now. Afternoon, Hillary, just checking the messages. Yeah, Chroma cameras are ace. I love mine. I, I was, I've got the back plate here. I was the fifth owner of one. Very happy about that. And yeah, it's um, it's been through quite a lot. That I've carried around with me. It's fairly lightweight, um, pretty sturdy. I think Steve's made some improvements since since the start. Uh, just like a couple of extra plates to help with the grip on the on the turning knobs and everything. Um, but no, the, the fact that you can kind of get them in different colours. Obviously, I went for a red one. I'm trying that. Let's get this negative out here then. So I haven't actually seen this yet. So. This is a, quite an exciting moment for me. All right, put this in. Hilary, I saw your uh, Polaroid lift onto a piece of glass. That looked great. Also very tricky to do. Um, but certainly that's worth pursuing. Okay, so let's just go back to this, and here we are. 
That's not looking too bad exposure wise. I don't know if that was in focus for you. Let's see. Black background with the flowers lit from the top and then a bit of light behind, a bit of a rim light and a very soft one underneath for a bit of fill light as well. But that's looking quite pleased with that. But like I say, I didn't want to um, change the settings. I didn't want to move my tripod around and everything because it's taken me like three hours to set that scene up just because it's so fiddly with the flowers just getting them exactly where you want them and the lighting and everything so uh yeah i'm just going to leave that be for the for the moment um i think that's all i was going to do today um has anybody out there shot large format before have you got any questions about it um chris i don't know if you're watching today he got in touch with me about a question regards um Equivalent apertures between 35mm and um, large format, um, and it's a bit of a, a bit of a trick one to explain this. So if you're, and I'm not even sure I fully understand it or can explain it. If you're if you're shooting at 2.8 at 50mm on 35mm lens, and you're trying to replicate that shot the same depth of field. You would have to use about 150 mil lens on large format at f11, and that would give you the same, almost the same, filling the frame um, and depth of field. I've got no idea the, the physics behind it all. I just know it's basically if you're trying to replicate the shot, it's I think it's like four stops different. Um, so you have to kind of work on that that assumption. Um, so yeah, there we go. I like I say I, I'm. I suppose I could set this up and print from it now. Uh, no, I haven't got the trays, I haven't got any chemical setup, unfortunately, so uh, it's going to be a very short one today. I am also about to trial something with uh, a couple of darkroom owners. Um, we're going to try and connect all our darkrooms together and do a little test stream. Well, we're not going to put it out public straight away, but if it goes well, then we'll, we'll release it. Um, and it's kind of a way of bringing community darkrooms like but private dark rooms together um so we can all kind of print together and, and chat and discuss what we're working on which i think could be quite an interesting idea so hopefully i'll have something to show from that um next week but other than that sorry folks that's all there is today um it's a very short one but uh great to see you thanks for popping in hillary and uh shall see you all very soon take care Bye.